Good morning, everyone. I would like to call the Territorial Leadership Committee to order. Before we begin, I would like to like you to rise, and I'd like to ask Mr. Thompson to lead us in the opening prayer. O oh God, may your spirit and guidance be with us, be in us as we work for the benefit of all our people, for the peace and justice in our land, and the constant recognition of the dignity and aspiration of those whom we serve. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. This is the third meeting of the Territorial Leadership Committee for the members of the 19th Legislative Assembly. All members have a copy of the agenda for today's meeting in front of them. In addition to the agenda, all members have a copy of the previously agreed upon guidelines and procedures for this meeting of the Territorial Leadership Committee. These guidelines and pr procedures maintain the existing geographic balance on Cabinet as such. Only members from Cam Lake, Great Slave, Frame Lake, Yellowknife Centre, and Yellowknife North are eligible to stand for this Executive Council position. <coughs> to confirm, does committee still agree with these guidelines and procedures? Uh, Mr. Norn. Um, thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Speaker. Um, I disagree with this convention, and uh, if you would allow me to speak to this, uh, uh, I will. Uh, I'll speak to that momentarily. Okay, Mr. Norn would like to speak to the convention. Mr. Norn. Masicho, Mr. Speaker. Uh, after looking at this and thinking about this very thoroughly, I do have what I consider Yellowknife constituents in the communities of Dilo and Dada that's in within Yellowknife city limits. And I believe that I could uh, stand and, uh, and put myself, uh, for, put my name forward for this nomination. And for after thinking this through, uh, I remember we had a. I'll share this story with with the um, with the other members. Just before Christmas, um, you know, we uh, we sat down as Yellowknife MLAs. Uh, we uh, we talked about different uh, initiatives that we could use our budgets um, to take part in Yellowknife events in Dilo and around Yellowknife, and uh, and I agreed at the time. And then it came part, and this this is kind of a little bit humorous, but it's not. Uh, we talked about Christmas cards. And uh, okay, sure, we could have all the LNFs and MLAs sit and have uh, take pictures, and we could all show like to our constituents around the LNF area that we that uh, we are LNF uh, MLAs. And I thought, okay, I, th I said yes originally. Then I thought, you know, I do have constituents in Plutsuka and Denunukwe. I don't think they'd appreciate that, so I said I declined. And after thinking about that, if I am good enough to be part of that conversation, to use my budget for Yellowknife events and to be part of a Christmas card. I think I am good enough to be part of this nomination process. So I thought I'd just share that with you. And uh, with that, I'd like to see what my, my colleagues, uh, how my colleagues uh, stand on this matter. Mr. Cho. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Uh, open it up for discussion. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The two from the north, two from the south, and two from Yellowknife protocol has been in place for many years. Uh, it is a semi-constitutional principle of consensus government. It simply cannot be changed without a much thorough discussion. Um, this is, in fact, on our caucus agenda for this upcoming weekend, the principles of consensus government. Uh, when we were talking about the southern candidates, Mr. Norn could have put his name forward previously. Um, there was never any discussion about whether he could put his name forward for Yellowknife in the previous TLC. Um, to now say that he's a Yellowknife MLA, I, it essentially removes a candidate from the southern constituencies, which already has the least number of MLAs. Um, we need to keep that balance of having an appropriate number of MLAs in the south, Yellowknife, and north. Uh, this conversation that has previously happened, the Legislative Assembly set out how this TLC would occur. I don't believe we need to be having this discussion. Let's have the TLC. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Norn will, will finish off with you after everybody speaks. Uh, yes. 
Uh, any further discussion? Ms. Cleveland? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I feel that one of the most important parts of what we do here is in inclusion and making sure that we have diversity at the table and diverse representation at the decisions that are made. My fear in making this decision today, I feel that it's a much bigger decision that does need to happen. I'm happy that it's on the caucus retreat for the weekend, but I feel that my biggest fear is that down the road in a future assembly that somebody will decide that the 2-2-2 two, two and two doesn't need to hold or that my fear would be represented, representation of everybody from all regions doesn't hold and that a region like the North who has the lowest population in the Northwest Territories but has some of the biggest challenges in the Northwest Territories ends up with the least amount of representation at the table and that would be devastating. So I think that it's really important that we end up with equal representation of all of our regions at the Cabinet table. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cleveland. Any further discussion? Mr. Lafferty. Masia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, did think you the did any cabinet Mr. Speaker, today today is very important important day when we speak about convention. We, this has been an issue and rules and regulations forever and so sometimes there's changes and now uh, about the premier and so far we had the premier to, uh, from Yellowknife three terms so there could be changes for Tuna Day and Wallet Day we have a member and he's part of Yellowknife for Ford Resolution and this will okay as well if we uh, take a look at uh, the whole process, the whole the territorial government, uh, and they were the part of Yellowknife when Yellowknife was created. When Yellowknife was created back in the day, these are the most important people here that we are living among. And so when you look at Tlinchho, they're important as well, but it, it's never uh, important, it's never a, an, an issue it, that we should be able to respect and listen to these people that's, that are been here forever. So th this has been an issue for all people. Now, there are Yellow Knives Dene and Willet Day as well, and this is very important that we listen, but at times it's like we never listen to him. And they, they are living right here among us, and so sometimes they come to our meeting, they have a ceremony for us, drumming for us, and yet we don't recognize that. As when we look at Willet Day, at that writing, Joe Hanley was a uh, Joe Hanley was a uh, Bob Bromley, and there are from Yellowknife, and now Yellowknife North. He, now he, he sits for Yellowknife Ingram Trail, and yet it's he's it's considered as Yellowknife. And uh, when you look at Dillon and Yellowknife, that's part of city of Yellowknife. We have issues with them. We deal with them. There's programs, all sorts, working on the roads, doing the pave. So what do we do? And they're part of municipality service as well. And they also have programs with Yellowknife. So, Mr. Speaker, so many times I brought these issues before, and so it's like if it it's only for yellow knife writing, so we can't not leave one out. So uh, when I look at this, when I look at it, we should have all aspect of people that wants to be able to run, it would be appropriate. So we saw what has been going on this week. So now we are here. So what do we do? So when we're going to be able to select 
So we should be able to look at this whole process again. This is what I like to see that. Uh, right now I would be able to stop. So when we speak, when we do quitting as I did, like right now when we see, we would be able to bring this up again. I like to make an issue out of it and leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this has put me in a difficult position. It uh this it uh premier it is it uh the Daniel Tin it's uh arts on Kelgoni the Daniel Wogus it uh has no sit uh the Hayat Tiagara Ho the it uh has no sit uh the conventions at the conventions that we do there was a reason for it. We haven't had an opportunity during this session to actually have the reasoning presented to us. Why did this come by out in the beginning? I'm gonna make, gonna make a guess. The reason was probably to make, ensure that there was balance, equal representation on cabinet, is my guess. I have nothing to confirm that. Um, the premier on cabinet has zero vote. It's allowed to say, but has zero vote. So in fact, actually, where we sit today with one yellow knife uh, minister being taken out is that uh, we only have one yellow knife minister that has a vote in cabinet. So, um, you know, and I always look at fairness. If it was a small community minister, would we be having this conversation? Um, you know, I, I try to look at that. The bigger thing for me, um, Mr. Chair, is that uh, I did get a, num a couple of phone calls from Indigenous leaders um, with concerns. Uh, there's division amongst them. Um, my job is, as, is the Minister of Indigenous Affairs, I think that it's important to consult with our stakeholders, and especially if we really re respect um, government to government and, and uh, equal partnership with our Indigenous governments. I think this is something that needs to have a bigger discussion, um, Mr. Chair, and so I think this is a rash decision that I think needs more time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Cochran. Any further discussion? Mr. Simpson? Senior? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there's no doubt that, uh, I, I, I guess to start off here, I had a chance to think about this uh, uh, last night and uh, uh, this morning. And there's no doubt that the regional and smaller communities uh, need additional support. And wh how that comes, I'm not quite sure whether it, you know, uh, it's something that we have to have that discussion on in a bigger discussion. And right now we're in the 11th hour. and. We've got work to do, and uh, this convention has been in place. Uh, uh, I assume that we had all agreed to it, and I just want for myself. I've got, you know, I've got constituents out there that you know are looking for work. We've got people out there looking for housing. We got, we've got lots of issues out there, and and those issues I think are probably bigger than than what we're talking about at this at this eleventh hour. So I would just like to, uh, like, I'll support the the two two and two right now but i would like to have that discussion at some point on uh, you know how we look at small communities in the regions because uh, you know we are we are left out in a way we don't have access to ministers like like mlas in in yellowknife have uh, we don't you know we don't have access to those services so i think it's important that uh, that we discuss it and and and, and again it, it even goes bigger than that like we have to look at this government people talk about you know, consensus government working, consensus government not working. We talk about party politics. You know, we talk about the possibility of maybe uh, the uh, the claimant uh, uh, indigenous organizations. You know, maybe uh, you know regionally uh, making up the government. Those are those are issues that we have to uh, and that we have to discuss. And I think that is probably better left. For a later day and uh, more than a few hours to uh, to discuss. So at this point in time, after careful consideration, I'm going to support that we just uh, stay with the two, two, and two. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Any further discussion, Mr. Riley? Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the uh, two, two, and two uh, convention has been in place since 1999 over 20 years. That's the way that uh, 
previous assemblies have uh, uh, set themselves up, and there was very good reason for doing that, to try to ensure that there is some form of uh, regional balance in terms of the makeup of uh, Cabinet. This issue was reviewed by the uh, Transition Matters Committee in the last assembly. Uh, some of us sat on that committee, we gave it uh, careful consideration and we couldn't even agree amongst ourselves as to how to change it. So the committee was silent on the issue but said this is something that, that does need some examination. And in fact that committee recommended that it should probably be rolled into the uh, a future mandate for the Electoral Boundaries Commission as uh, part of our constitutional development uh, discussions and debate. Uh, I'm a bit, uh, more than a bit surprised that this has come to the floor this morning. I had no notice from the Honourable Member that this was going to come to the floor, uh, and I don't think that's the way we should be trying to do business, especially at this time. Um, you know, I've worked very hard <laughs> for most of my adult life in the Northwest Territories to uh, uh, support and work closely with Indigenous governments. Uh, my time on City Council, uh, we had a not a great relationship with the Yellow Knives Denny First Nation, but I worked uh, to uh, and help negotiate a memorandum of understanding so that we could have joint council meetings. And uh, I've worked closely with the Yellow Knives Denny First Nation on giant mine issues, and I think I still have a, a good working relationship with uh, their leadership. Uh, and uh, I, well, I have some sympathy with some of the the arguments perhaps put forward by my my friend. Um, DLO is within the city limits, uh, DETA is not. There is discussions, of course, ongoing between YKDFN and the City of Yellowknife about uh, their relationship moving forward and where uh, a boundary may be drawn. Um, and in fact, I'm the one that actually brought the issue of uh, Yellowknife MLAs being able to use uh, our uh, um, constituency work expense allowance to um, assist with uh, uh, events uh, in uh, DLO. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to blame somebody for bringing that, that, that uh, issue forward, you can blame me. Uh, and I believe it was a right decision on the part of the Board of Management in the last assembly to uh, um, allow Yellowknife MLAs to do that. But, you know, the, 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 this issue of constitutional development and the, the regional representation uh, uh, within Cabinet that is part of a much bigger discussion. It's something that we set our minds to at the beginning of this assembly, and we agreed at that point to uh, maintain that. So I'm not prepared to reopen that discussion at this point. And I believe this is something that is a live issue that needs to be, uh, there needs to be an opportunity for public input and uh, debate. And there will be none if this uh, proceeds in this manner uh, here this morning. Uh, I don't believe that that's uh, appropriate. Um, these are matters that I think we should uh, ask the, an Electoral Boundaries Commission to examine. That is something that we're going to discuss this weekend in Fort Smith, uh, what sort of mandate they may have. Uh, and I believe it is time to have this kind of discussion and debate, as it is at any point in our history. But to try to do this uh, on the fly, on the floor of the House this morning, I didn't know about this. No public debate, uh, or no, no opportunity for the public to have any discussion. I don't think this is the right time or place to do it. Lastly, Mr. Chair, as I understand, the rules for uh, uh, Territorial Leadership Committee are set by caucus. We do not have the authority to change that ourselves. If a change is to be made, this needs to go back to caucus. I do not want to have another discussion in caucus about this. I think we need to finish this debate discussion and proceed. And we need to do this in a unified manner. Trust and relationships, we have to f start to move forward in a unified way to get results for our, community, for our communities, for our people. I want to get back to work. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Any further discussion? Uh, Minister of Finance. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, the discussion that has been introduced this morning to me goes to the very core of the structure of consensus government. It goes to the representation in the House and it goes to the representation for all people in the Northwest Territory. And Mr. Speaker, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms does guarantee equal representation. 
That doesn't mean perfect equal division by number or by perfect lines, but it does have a constitutional principle at play about equal representation for all people in Canada, including the people of Northwest Territories. It's a constitutional principle, it's a principle of democracy, and it's one that needs to be debated uh, by all the members that are here. But we need to have that debate in a way that is informed, where we can do, have due consideration of the constitutional principles at play, due consideration of the needs of the people of the Northwest Territories, where we can give consideration to ensuring that all of the small communities who feel underrepresented have a voice and know that they have a voice. But also so that we also, that the people in Yellowknife, who are 50% of the population, also have a voice, that they continue to have a voice. And, and Mr. Speaker, in my view, the Northwest Territories is still a whole, and if the small communities falter, Yellowknife will falter. If Yellowknife falters, the small communities will falter. And vice versa, if the small communities can succeed and have that voice and are confident with their voice, Yellowknife's going to do well too. And if Yellowknife is doing well, the small communities should be doing well. So we need to find a way so that this debate is unified and that we can actually go forward and feel that every person in the Northwest Territories has that equal representation that's guaranteed to all of us in the Charter. But Mr. Speaker, I'm not, that's really the extent of what I can provide this morning. I think more needs to be provided to every member here and we should be hearing from all of our constituents before we make this fundamental change. And so, uh, so Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm not in favour of, of having any further debate from my side. I'm not in favour of making this change right now, um, but I'm very much in favour of having this discussion. And I, am, I will give one last comment, which is that, um, you know, and, I, and I think one of the other members said, we need to look at the whole process, and I agree. And fortunately, that has been built into the Electoral Boundaries Commission Act where every second sitting there is a requirement that we actually go out and have some consideration of these issues and that is coming up this term. So this House and this Assembly has an obligation to go out and have this exact discussion in an organized fashion um, and really when, when the member says we get down to work, maybe this is one of the items we need to get down to work on very soon. Thank you Mr. Speaker. Thank you Ms. Wozniak. Any further discussion? Ms. Marcellus. I did not know this was coming to the floor. Uh, I guess some people feel that uh, I, I've always spoken about smaller communities and regional centres. But I spoke, I spoke about it because I know that we can make change in the future and I, I thought that's what we were going to be doing. Um, it took me by surprise that they felt the, uh, the few members that I thought would confine in me with something like this did not say anything to me. As far as I'm concerned, uh, Fort Rez and Lutzake are part of the South Slave. And now I'm told now we, uh, we want to be considered a part of Yellowknife. You know, a lot of us bring a lot of qualities to this, uh, this house. And as a member uh, from Tabacha, you know, I feel I bring a lot of qualities too. And one of the qualities that I always brought was honesty, integrity, and upfront. I, I like to know things before I come here. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, and then I would make a decision on it. Uh, being thrown this uh, uh, at the 11th hour is not the way I do business. I'm all for Indigenous governments to move forward, always have been. But coming through the side door to uh, try to change things at the 11th hour, when we had this discussion at the very beginning and no one seemed to want to participate unless it's the person they want, is not the way to go. I strongly feel when we have this discussion, we have to try and get the best people for the job on the Executive Council. I strongly feel that. And, um, and I'm going to leave it at that because I, uh, I feel that I was, you know, uh, as one of uh, the Aboriginal members in this house, I, I deserve that. And with that, I'm just going to leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Ms. Marcellus, any further discussion? Uh, Ms. Simler? Mr. Chair, I just, too, I, I just want to kind of go back to where we started. We did have this discussion, as m some of the members have said, when we first got here. There was discussion about what the split should be. There was, you know, and some of us, like we said, we had the, tra the <laughs> Transition Matters report and to ensure that, you know, small communities, regional centres in Yellowknife would be represented. We have that. You know, right now we have a member that from Yellowknife that, you know, is is vacant. There's, I meant there's a seat vacant. So we have two members that are small communities representing small communities, one from the north and one from the south. The convention that we decided then, we had discussions again about it. We all decided, the majority decided, this is consensus government. We had a majority, we move forward on what we decided. Well, you know, we've had a lot of other things going on this week and the people of the Northwest Territories deserve us to get to work and this to me is not as important as some of the things that are going on in my community and that have needs. And I need to ensure that in the future that we respect this convention, this decisions that we make because I don't ever want to see my region, my the North, not being resent, represented in this cabinet because nobody knows better how it is to be in the North than people from the North that have lived in the North. And I will honestly say, I don't know what it's like to live in the South. I've had very short few times where I have to live in Yellowknife in my previous life. So that's not my, that's not where I have the expertise. So I think today, we, like we said, the majority, this is where our convention sits and I agree with keeping it as two, two and two, the way it's been and that's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Similar, any further discussion? Mr. Norm. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thanks for uh, all my colleagues for the comments and, uh, and uh, for, consider, like, for talking about this and, uh, and what I'd like to say is, you know, after thinking this through as well, um, as back as far as the, the 15th assembly, the riding of Willida was considered a, a Yellowknife riding. Um, Mr. Hadley uh, was the premier and, uh, and held that seat for quite some time. And two changes uh, since then, um, my uh, riding has now been amalgamated and it's now Chinida Willida. And we're talking about convention. You know, we, we did break convention too by having uh, a Yelena Premier for consecutive terms. And really, we didn't question that as well. There was no question, there was no debate in here, there was no uproar. And I listened to my colleague from Yelena North. And just reading between lines, it sounds like that my constituents from DLO are not part of Yellowknife. That's what I'm hearing. And I'm hoping that my other colleagues don't feel that way. And I won't take too much of your time, but really thinking through all this from a high level, there's imbalances in here. Too many of uh, our people, our Aboriginal populations, are in jails, are not being hired on our processes, the way we're running it. Our businesses are wanting, our Aboriginal businesses are wanting. No more. And I feel like I'm speaking to my ancestors when, you know what, I want to stand up here. That's what I'm here for. I feel right here, right now, this is my calling. This is what I'm here for. And I will never stop fighting for the little guy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Um, seeing the majority are not in favor of this at this time, we won't put it to a vote, unless everybody wants to, but uh, I think we'll just carry on. Okay.
The next item on the agenda is the review and adoption of the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? See none. If not, the agenda is adopted. Are we agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. I wish to remind members that our proceedings today are being broadcast live on the Legislative Assembly television network and on social media. Our proceedings today are being simultaneously translated into Tlicho, Chippewan, and French. I would also like to remind members that although this is a less formal committee than the House itself, members are required to stand while speaking. Further, as this is a meeting of the Territorial Leadership Committee and not a sitting of the House, our, our guidelines require that you address me as the Chair rather than as the Speaker. The next item on the agenda is the election of a member of the Executive Council. The process for selection of a member of Executive Council will begin with self-nominations from the floor. I will now ask all members from the agreed upon constituencies that wish to allow their name to stand for this position on the Executive Council to please rise. Mr. Norn, uh, unfortunately you're not eligible to let your name stand, but uh, consist the existing guidelines. With your indulgence, Mr. Speaker? Uh, can I speak uh, to the address of the House really quickly before I sit down? Is that okay, Mr. Speaker? Speaker, I'd like to say something really briefly. It's okay with committee. Uh, and I've been stifled by the system. Once you show us, speaker. Thank you, Mr. Norn. Members, as Ms. Green is the only nominee for the position on the Executive Council, it is my duty to advise you that Ms. Green has been acclaimed to serve on Executive Council. Congratulations, Ms. Green. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I ran for this position in uh, October because I thought I had a lot to bring uh, to the Executive Council. Um, I have uh, experience in, in very diverse fields. Um, just briefly, I worked for uh, CBC in a number of different places in Canada and for nine years here. And in that time, I was able to travel widely through the NWT uh, to a total of 27 communities and really get a feel for the diversity of uh, circumstances in which people live and, and of the people themselves. And I feel that that had, had served me very well in my first term when I was a regular member. And of course, uh, at that time in the regular member caucus, we had all of the small community members. So we were very alive to uh, the issues that they brought forward. And, and I wanna say that uh, about the 18th assembly that we never failed to support the small uh, community MLAs in, in their requests. So an example I'll give you is the Small Community Employment Fund. That was something that Mr. Thompson and Mr. Bolio uh, lobbied very hard for and uh, which ultimately was successful. Um, 
I am very excited by this opportunity. I, I see it as, as a, a fairly daunting process. There is a tremendous amount of division in this house, uh, and it is being fueled by uh, by both inside and outside actors. Um, it has uh, brought us to a point of, of real division uh, where, we, where we are today. And what we need to do is to stop with that path, with that direction, and we need to start working together. And we need reconciliation uh, with the people who are aggrieved and continue to uh, to uh, express that in their different ways. I've heard uh, a need for better communication. Uh, since I have been able to establish relationships with the regular members in the past nine months, I feel that I am off to a good start there. I've been able to work with uh, the people on this side of the house. Um, and I also uh, look forward to working closely together with the Executive Council, obviously, but also with the regular MLAs. I am very aware of the issues that you raised uh, with uh, the revocation motion yesterday, and, uh, and I will address them to the best of my ability. I want you to know finally what I've said at the end of every nomination speech. I've made no promises, and none have been made to me. I'm standing here on my own merits, and I appreciate your confidence. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Members, Ms. Green will be recommended for the appointment of the Executive Council by way of formal motion in the House. I would like to thank everyone for your contributions and participation today. This meeting of the Territorial Leadership Committee is now concluded. We are adjourned. Thank you.